everybody. Hello, Apples1118. Hello, whoever else is jumping on board. Mr. Mike Ray, Keith from Philly, and DX Mitchell, Chevy Big Black 54, TO1583. Who else is coming into the party? Go ahead and start hearting it up. What's up, Terrell? How you doing, man? Go ahead and heart it up as you come on board and invite your your followers, your Twitter people, and your Periscope peeps. And what's up, T-Fab? Thank you, D. Mitchell, for inviting your people. What's up, Sub-Zero? Do you spit out ice like Mortal Kombat? Dolomite Fan is in the house. Property Solutions. What's up? Thank you, Mr. Keith, for sharing on your Twitter. All right, V Smiling Four is in here. You see me in Vegas? Where are you at, TFab? What's going on, sisters? It's always good to have people up in here hanging with the YJ. Yo, yo, LA. All right, that's what's up. Thank you for inviting your followers, Sub Zero. Go ahead and heart it up as y'all come on board. You've been following me for a while. All right, awesome, awesome. You know, I don't mind a little bit of stalking. That's all good. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Just messing with you. So, anyways, uh, for those of you guys, <laughs> I'll just mess with you, man. <laughs> I know it's a good stalking. So, uh, anyways, you guys, I am up here in my office. I'm working pretty late. I'm on the West Coast, so I'm not uh, working too, too late uh, for you people on the East Coast. Uh, but let me show you what an office of a warrior looks like. What's up, Sir Williams? Look, this is my office right here. So y'all know I have a home office, but I also have an office office where I actually do work. So uh, my own uh, three businesses, I'm partners in some uh, one business and I uh, got my degrees on the wall and got my little table up here, my little glass table, got my little speaker or microphone where I do my uh, podcasting at. And everything and oh yeah look at that junk in the corner can you tell that's not a woman's uh can you tell a woman did not uh set this office up <laughs> i'm bad aren't i <laughs> oh yeah and got a little bonsai tree in the back so uh anyways uh what i am going to do you see you got to deal with a realtor two properties need to know how to write up the deal all right well i'm going to show you how to how to do a contract. So anyways, let me flip the screen. All right. All right. So uh, before we get started, uh, we are doing a event in Las Vegas, March 18th through the 20th this year at the Platinum Hotel, myself and Mr. Ray Mabry. I want you at the end of this uh, broadcast to check out houseflippingsummit.com, houseflippingsummit.com and check out the live event. But uh, anyways, I'm going to go through this uh, contract real quickly. Uh, this is one of the, is this the same contract you emailed? Yes, it is. If you send an email to gift at houseflippingdojo.com, it is the same one that you got. So um, anyways, this is your contract for the sale and purchase of real estate. And let me go ahead and shift this poll and go ahead and keep on giving me some hearts. If you love this information, that I'm giving you, just go ahead, show me some love, tap that screen, just heart it out, okay? No hate, we just congratulate on here. So anyways, this is the purchase agreement. What's up, Ross? This is the purchase agreement that you're gonna use whenever you get a property locked up under contract with a seller, okay? And so what you're going to do, I'm gonna try and hold this steady, is where it says parties, you're gonna type this in or write this in, uh, legibly so right here you're going to put down the name of the sellers okay if you don't know the names of the sellers then you're going to uh, uh, look them up on the uh, property tax records okay so look whenever you're talking to a person you may be talking to let's say John Smith right so you know that all right John Smith is the person yes it can it can be used in all 50 states Dolomite fan this contract can be used in all 50 states okay uh, so anyways, what let's say you are talking to John Smith, right? Now, John Smith did not tell you that his wife, Sally Smith, is on the property. And you don't know that, right? But what I always do, and what's up, Carlos J? 
what I always do, you guys, is I always check the property tax records just to see whose name is on the property, okay? And pretty much any city in America, you can check this out, okay? And you can find out the names of everybody who is on the title, okay? And so what you're going to do is uh, you're going to write um, out all the names of the people. And Mr. Mike Ray said, where do you check that out at? I'm glad you asked. So uh, let me get out of there. So what you're going to do is uh, you're going to do a search on Google for property tax assessor. All righty. And while I'm doing this, are you guys enjoying the, the information so far? Let me know. I want to make sure I'm not telling y'all some stuff that y'all don't want to see. All right. Playoff 31 said yes. All righty. So thank you, Pam. Pam just snuck up on here. I didn't even see you jo uh, join the party, Pam. So uh, thank you, sir, William. Appreciate it. What's up, Sherry? Is it still negative 22? Where them hearts at? Yeah, keep on beating them hearts out there. Yes. All righty. So look, I just did a search for property tax assessors in Tulsa County, okay? I was actually just looking up a property. I have a student uh, who I am potentially going to lock up a property with in Tulsa, and uh, this is going to be a pretty sweet deal. He's going to potentially make 5000 bucks on the deal. I may be able to make it anywhere between fifteen to twenty k on the deal, uh, fixing and flipping it. So uh, it's going to be a pretty sweet deal for the both two of us if everything pans out right. So, anyways, uh, let's say the property address is. Uh, uh, let me think of something. Uh, two three zero four. Actually, that's not going to be a good one. All righty. Two one two South, hundred and second. East Avenue. All righty. So can y'all see this? So I'm doing a search on this website and the property tax assessor's website is going to look different for everybody. Okay. It's going to look different for everybody. Okay. So look, I just did a search for 2123 South 102nd East Avenue in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. And so this tells me all the information, okay? It tells me the legal description. So I got the legal description right here, subdivision, all this crap, legal, section, township, range, and all that, okay? And it's going to give you a picture of the house in most cases. And right here, owner name. So the owner's name is Deborah Jereen White, okay? So if there's multiple owners on here, it will tell me that there's multiple owners, okay? It gives you their mailing address, okay? You can do this when you're driving for dollars, you guys, as well. So you, when you're driving for dollars, you can pick up addresses and then just look it up on your property tax assessor's website, okay? And, I mean, you can do this in pretty much any uh, city. So if I do property tax assessor Miami, I should be able to find something. Okay. I sent you a message for the wholesale in the Modesta Stockton area today. Yes, you know what? I think you sent it to my uh, fan page. I saw a message, but I didn't read it because I've been swamped with work today. So, all right. So, look, uh, property tax assessors. I'm going to assume that this MiamiDay.gov property search ASP is uh, where you will find it in Miami, okay? But anyways, long story short, you guys, um, you can find it pretty much in any city in America, okay? So back to the contract, you're going to put down the names of everybody who owns the property, okay? And uh, Keith, go ahead and hold that question. I'm going to answer that here at the end, if you don't mind. Um, and then it's going to say their heirs, successors, administrators, and assigns a seller whose address is, and then right here on this address portion right here, you're just going to write down their uh, billing address, okay, wherever they live at, okay? Because uh, in most cases, when you're uh, flipping a house, wholesaling a house, they're not going to live at that same address of the property that you're wholesaling, okay? And then this next section, it says, and you're going to put your name, but specifically, you're going to put your business name. So hopefully, we're trying to be six-figure wholesalers. So hopefully, we have LLCs, and if you don't have an LLC, hopefully you at least have a DBA, okay? It just looks professional. We want to keep it professional. We don't want to look like we just sit up shop, okay? So uh, right there, let me flip this bad boy back around. Right here, you're going to put your business name right here, okay? Their heirs, successors, and administrators. And it signs as buyer because you're the buyer whose mailing address is 
you're going to put down your P.O. box, okay, or your business address. But I would like for you guys to never, ever, ever in your life put down your uh, personal home address. Uh, that will never be good, okay? It's not professional, and you don't want anybody sneaking up on you, and uh, yeah, you get what I'm trying to say. So go ahead and heart it up. Share with your followers if you're enjoying this stuff. Uh, the contract continues to say, witness that the seller has this day sold upon the agreements listed below to the buyer, which is you, the real, real property that is legally described as, and then subject property, okay? So on subject property right here, you are going to write down the address of the property, okay? Again, you're going to do it legibly. Um, hopefully, you're going to type it in. Uh, type it in. That's what uh, real Gs do. Type it in. And then below here... It's going to say legal description. So Dolomite fan says, what if you do business from home? If you do business from home, um, don't do that. You know, go ahead and, yeah, have your office at home, but get a P.O. box. A P.O. box is going to cost you like 15, 20 bucks a month tops, you know, maybe 30 bucks a month, okay? But uh, be professional. If you don't have access to a P.O. box, then use a friend's office address, but you just use any any uh, business address, okay, you guys? Because it just looks more professional and you don't want to be giving out your home address, okay? So on legal description, you can go ahead and thank you guys for inviting your followers. I saw uh, you, Sir William, inviting your followers and somebody else. So on legal description, again, that's not very important. You can just leave this blank because a title company can always fill it in or the real estate attorney can always fill, uh, fill this in. But um, if you're just feeling gung-ho like I feel at times, you can just uh, get the legal description from the property tax assessor's website, okay? From this uh, bad boy right over here, all right? So back to here, let's scroll this bad boy down. Sales price, okay? You're going to put the sales price that you guys agreed to, okay? So over the phone when you talk, you haven't seen the property yet, but you guys have tentatively agree to a sales price okay so let's say that the sales price is a hundred thousand dollars okay you're gonna type in a hundred thousand dollars this is the price that's gonna go to the uh the seller okay and uh thank you sir i appreciate that he said always great content um down here it says subject to existing mortgage or financing okay um in many cases you guys you're going to leave this blank uh, the only time you would fill this out is if a person has an existing mortgage on it. So if the person has no mortgage on the property, in many cases they won't. You'll just put zero right here. And if the person does have a mortgage, let's say they have a $50,000 mortgage, you're just going to write down $50,000 right here, okay? So $100,000 right here, $50,000 right there, all right? You guys following this? Go ahead and speak to me. And then what you're going to do right here is total due to the seller, if the sales price is 100,000 and they have no mortgage, so zero right here, total due to the seller is 100,000. If the sales price is 100,000 and they have a mortgage of 50,000, then you're just gonna take 50,000 uh, from 100,000 and that's gonna leave you with 50,000 that's due to the seller. If a person has a mortgage of $75,000, then you're gonna take 75,000 from 100,000 and then the total due to the seller is gonna be 25,000, okay? And uh, Overflow Millions just asked a great question. He said, does the uh, mortgage have to be exact or precise? Uh, no, it does not. So that's always going to be a number that is going to fluctuate. So uh, just get the latest amount, and they can typically get that from their uh, latest mortgage. Um, 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 what do you call those things, those receipts that they send to you? Or they can just look it up online. So, uh, But that amount is always going to fluctuate, but the title company will always – uh, make sure that everything's accurate at the day of close. Okay, you guys? So next, it says payable. This is a cash transaction. Buyer pays all closing costs. Purchase price is net, okay? So in 100% of the cases, you guys, we just go ahead and put down that we pay all closing costs, okay? Now, what's going to happen is in, mo in most cases, we're going to push the closing costs to our cash buyers. We're not going to pay the closing costs out of our assignment fee, okay? The cash buyer is, okay? Um, next, it says existing mortgages, existing finance on subject properties 
will be current in all payments of principal interest late charges escrow amounts required by the mortgage escrow balance has been calculated into the price and will transfer to the buyer with title buyer will take subject to his or her debt okay and so um if you're explaining this to a person you, you want to explain the contract to the people in as simple layman's terms as possible okay and um, I actually revised this contract many, many years ago. I made it where it was very, very easy and comfortable with uh, most people. And I made it in uh, big fonts, okay? And basically what you tell them is, hey, uh, if you have an existing mortgage, this only applies to you if you do have an existing mortgage. And it basically means that uh, whatever your mortgage that is due to you, I'm sorry, that is due to the bank, that's going to get paid first. And then you're going to get paid the balance which uh, uh, is left over, okay? So what's up, bull fan? Are you a Chicago Bulls fan or are you just like the, the four-legged creature? All righty. And right here, expenses, buyer pays all closing costs. Okay? Simple, straightforward. Risk of loss. If the subject property is damaged prior to transfer of title, buyer has the option of canceling this contract. The seller also agrees that they shall remove all valuable items from the subject property and that the buyer is not responsible for any lost, stolen, or damaged items within the property. Okay? Uh, this is something you guys, w which I added into here. Um, many of you guys, uh, he said four-legged bucking. I'm doing great, bull. So this is something, this risk of loss thing that I put in here that I added into my contract because many years ago I had a property in Sand Springs, Oklahoma, and I had a lockbox on it. And so, you know, I gave cash buyers the code to get in, and the property was trashed. There was a bunch of junk in there. And, um, yeah, we got the deal wholesale. And the seller had a bunch of junk in there, right? And what happened was he said that he had a rocking horse or something like that. He said he had a rocking horse that um, had been in his family for 100 years that disappeared from there, okay? He said that, hey, must have been some of your guys that you uh, allowed into my house, you know? And I'm just really, really angry about it and this and that. And, you know, he's just making a big, huge fuss. So rather than me, um, you know, fighting about it or whatnot or arguing about it, I just said, oh, okay, hey, you know what, uh, Bill or Frank or whatever his name was, I said, I'll just go ahead and give you an extra 500 bucks um, on top of the money that you're getting, which I think he was getting 10,000 uh, bucks. So I said, you're just going to get 10,500 bucks to close. Uh, apologize for the inconvenience, okay? Um, I halfway believed him. I mean, uh, I think he may have lied, but... Uh, you know, there's the, the slight chance that he could have been telling the truth, okay? Um, and, and so, I mean, it's not worth fighting over. And so, um, I gave him an extra 500 bucks. But, I mean, that's an extra 500 bucks that could have went to my pocket, okay? So, anyways, I put this uh, provision in there uh, just to protect you from that and protect my students from that. Uh, so, this is basically saying that if there's anything valuable in the property, you need to take it out. Prorations. Real property taxes will be prorated based on the current tax, uh, year's taxes without allowance for discounts, including homestead or other exemptions. Rents will be current and be prorated at uh, the date that the title transfers. Uh, basically, what this means, and the way I explain it to the seller, is that you're responsible for your taxes up until the point of uh, when this property closes, and you'll pay that out of the earnings that you make from the deal and everything tax-wise that happens after that date is our responsibility okay so defects defects uh seller warrants at the subject property to be free from hazardous substances and from violations of any zoning environmental building health or government codes seller further warrants that there is no material or other known defects or facts regarding the property which would adversely affect the value of said property and the way I, I, I explain it to the sellers you guys is like i'm really comical when i'm talking to folks right and i tell them look this basically means that we're not going to go in here. It's not a toxic dump. You know, there's not a bunch of mold in here. I'm not going to come in here and die or go home and wake up in the morning after I sleep and wake up with a freaking leg growing out of my forehead, okay? That's basically what that means. And usually they laugh like, oh, ha, 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 so funny, Daniel. But, I mean, it's just a simple way of explaining it, okay? Next, uh, no judgments. Seller warns that there are no judgments threatening the equity of subject property and that there is no bankruptcy pending or contemplated by any title holder. Seller will not further encumber the property and an affidavit may be recorded at the buyer's expense, putting the public on notice that the closing of this contract 
will extinguish liens and encumbrances hereafter recorded. Uh, basically, what this means, you guys, is it just means, hey, uh, Mr. Seller, this just means that um, you aren't considering doing bankruptcy. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, if we buy this property, that there's nobody that comes after us uh, because we we have thought that we bought this uh, free and clear. OK. And it also means that you're not going to encumber it for uh, any further, meaning you're not going to go out there and place a loan on there because you're coming out to Las Vegas for March 18th to the 20th to Daniel Weafi's house flipping summit and you want to get a bunch of money so you can play at the roulette table, you know, don't put a, a second mortgage on your house to do uh, crazy stuff. Okay. Uh, possession, possession of the property with all keys and garage door openers will be delivered to the buyer when title transfers. And, uh, what's up, Mike buckles. I just let the people know that, Hey, we need keys. Um, I'm going to show my funding partners, your property. I want, one of my funny partners to fund your property as quickly as humanly possible. Okay. So I need access to it. I can't do, I don't want to be put in a position where I have to wait for you. I don't want to be put in a position where I have to inconvenience you either. Okay. So I need a copy of the key, which, uh, 90% of the time they they will do it. So, Hey buddy, I'm missing the fun says Michael buckles. No, the fun starts when Mike buck hits the periscope. All right, so next is inspections. And uh, hey, are you guys enjoying this? Go ahead and comment. Tell me if I'm boring you to death or whether I should keep on going on. And then the periscope grew silent. And the heart stopped coming. <laughs> keep it coming, okay. All righty, keep going. All righty, yes. Oh, hey, it's Candace. All right, awesome deal, Sub Zero, great deal. All right, cool. Go, 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 go. Yeah, Duwada says knowledge is power. Yes, it is. All righty, so let's get this property started. So, hey, Candice, how you doing? Do you use this exact uh, agreement, Michael? If you use this exact agreement, that means you grabbed that from me many years ago, probably. Because I totally uh, swatched this thing up. All right. So, look. Uh, where was I at? Uh, let's see. Possession. Okay. Inspections. The I am doing very well, Candace. Just working a late night. So, look. Um, inspections. This contract is contingent upon the buyer's inspection and approval of the property prior to the transfer of title. Seller agrees to provide access to the buyer's representatives prior to the transfer of the title for inspection and repairs. So again, this is self-explanatory. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, we just want to be able to get in the property and make our inspections, okay? Um, and this thing right here, this is one of your loopholes to get you out of the contract in case um, you need to cancel it, okay? So in case you need to cancel it, um, if it fails inspection, your inspection, then you can cancel this, okay? Because the word, the contract is contingent, means that this contract is only valid upon my inspection and approval. And if that doesn't happen, then I can go ahead and terminate this contract, okay? Acceptance. But you're not going to tell that to the buyer, obviously. I'm sorry, you're not going to tell that to the seller. All right, acceptance. This instrument will become a binding contract when accepted by the seller and signed by both buyer and seller. If it's not accepted and signed by the seller prior to uh, whatever date, this contract shall be void, okay? So I... If I am in front of the buyer, I'm sorry, if I'm in front of the seller, right, then I just go ahead and put today's date, okay? But if I'm emailing a contract or if I'm mailing a contract, then I may put a date that's 48 or 72 hours in advance, okay? Because I'm just giving them time, but you don't want to give them too too much time, okay? You don't want to put down a week or two weeks because that's way too much time, okay? You want to go ahead and make this a two or three day um, offer. Okay. You don't want to be on the hook like a month down the line or two months down the line for some contract, you know, uh, because they signed it late. Okay. So, uh, remember that. And if that didn't make any sense, then just ask me and I'll clarify it more. Okay. Third page. And again, you guys notice that this contract, I wrote it in like 12 point fonts. Um, and I made it very, very easy to the eyes. Deposit. Upon acceptance, buyer will place an escrow and earnest money deposit 
of $10 with title company, which will be a part of the cash paid to the seller when title transfers. This deposit will be returned to the buyer if title does not transfer in accordance with this agreement and said title company will close this transaction. So look, this is really, really sweet because I wrote out the number 10 right there, okay? So I said $10. Can y'all see that? Look, I'm putting it so close that y'all who wear glasses who ain't wearing them right now can see it. Now, I did not write it out in numerals just because I don't want it to be the first thing that a person catches when they see it. And Michael Buckles knows exactly why I did this. Because, you know, that's definitely a very, very small earnest money deposit. But um, unless they say anything crazy, you know, I, I'm putting down $10. As long as you put down at least $1 um, on a contract, then that's all you need in order to make a contract uh, valid, okay? Uh, but, you know, if somebody asks you for, you know, more of a deposit, then you can go ahead and go as high as you want. But I recommend on these wholesale deals, you only go between 10 to to $100. So um, I'm currently working on a deal um, uh, with another gentleman, and uh, the earnest money deposit that was put down was 2000 bucks. So uh, that was a pretty interesting thing. But uh, I may explain that a little bit later on, well, at a future date. So anyways, let me stop rambling. Seller agrees that the buyer may place signs and show the property immediately to funding partners. Yeah, ten dollars definitely works. Um, Mr. Mike Ray asks, "Do you hand them the earnest money deposit after they sign?" What's up, Jazzy Ash? I hope you're not ashy on your elbows. Um, in most cases, I do give them the money. I just go ahead and I give them the ten dollars or twenty dollars, and I say, um, "Hey, look, Steve. In order for us to make the contract valid, I need to give you at least one dollar." Okay to make the, the the contract valid. So what I'm doing is I'm giving you $10, okay? Just so that we can make sure that this uh, contract is valid, okay? Hello, Miss Ash. Um, thank you, give me some hearts. Thank you, Candace, I appreciate you. She's like my heart manager. Um, okay, so yeah, um, and I give them the, the uh, 10 or 20 bucks, okay? And if by any means I had to cancel the contract, I never asked them for the 10 or $20 back, okay? So you guys, if you have to cancel a, a contract and you've given them 10 or 20 bucks, I mean, obviously, according to this contract, we're supposed to give the earnest money deposit to the uh, title company, but I just like to give them something, you know, so they can have something in their hand, you know, that way they feel like, um, uh, they've, that way they feel like they've won a little bit. Okay. You know, you give somebody a little bit of cash in their hand, you know, they can go buy a Big Mac, extra fries, whatever people buy nowadays. I don't know. Uh, but give them the money, but if you have to cancel the contract, I repeat, do not ask them for the 10 or 20 bucks back. Don't be a cheapskate, okay? So, switching this camera back around. Uh, and go ahead and hearten me up, you guys. Go ahead and invite your followers, even though I'm almost at the end. Um, uh, okay. Seller agrees that the buyer may place signs and show the property immediately. That would be kind of funny. It would be kind of sad, though. So thank you, Constructive and Candace. Uh, agrees that the buyer may place signs and show the property immediately to the funding partners upon acceptance of this contract by both parties. This is very important because um, this is basically giving you per, uh, permission to place signs at the property. One of the best ways that you can uh, uh, wholesale a property, you guys, is to buy a big red and white for sale by owner sign from um, a place like Walmart, okay? So uh, let me show y'all real quick for sale by owner sign. These bad boys pull. I mean, it costs like 20 bucks for you to get this type of sign. You can get it at pretty much any uh, Walmart. But a sign like this, it's going to be metal. Yeah, Mike uh, has probably used them before as well. You know, you, for sale by owner, your phone number, you plant it straight up in the middle of the yard. And boy, yeah, you can go to Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot, any of those uh, construction stores. And um, you guys, these signs pull like like nothing, man. I mean, these signs are the, are the um, I, <laughs> I can't even think of a good word to say, but they work, okay? They're a moneymaker. What's up, moneymaker one? And uh, they cost you 20 bucks. Uh, no, this, yeah, to get cash buyers. And... What, what uh, people typically will teach you when you get a property locked up under contract is they'll tell you 
to put out a bunch of banner signs in the uh, neighborhood, right? They'll tell you put out a bunch of banner signs in the neighborhood, and um, you're going to get uh, um, people calling you. And Candace asked, you're saying to put in the yard after you get the contract signed. Yes, put it in the yard after you get the contract signed. Now, the only time I don't do that is if the person lives in the same area or they visit their house frequently, then I don't put the sign in the yard just because it looks kind of uh, douchey if the person that you just bought this house from is like, in their mind, you already have um, a funny partners, right? But if they come back and they see like this big ass for sale by owner sign in their yard, uh, they may be a little bit pissed. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I could have, I could have done that. Why am I selling you the property? I could have put a, a for sale by owner sign in my front yard, you know. So I only do that um, <laughs> if the person does not live in the area. Alrighty. So uh, back to my MacBook. And you guys, if you guys are doing computers, which all of you guys should, dump the PCs and go Mac. I promise you, once you go Mac. You won't go back. Ain't that right? Yes, it is. And the church said, Amen. Alrighty, so back to the contract. Memorandum contract, is it needed? Okay, T.O. asked a good question. Memorandum contract, is it needed? How many contracts contracts are, do I need to lock it up? Okay, uh, memorandum of contract, that's something which you put on file at the county downtown just to state that you have an interest in that property. You put that, you place that uh, memorandum with the county just because you don't want the seller to try to go behind your back and steal the property to somebody else, okay? Um, what's up, Dolomite fan has joined the party again. Now, look, I never file memorandum of contracts just because um, I just don't. Hanging with New Jer uh, with YJ says, can I use this with a realtor? Uh, yes and no. So if you're dealing with a investor-friendly realtor, yes. If you're not dealing with an investor-friendly uh, realtor, then probably not. So the key thing is, you guys, if you're dealing with realtors, then deal with investor-friendly realtors, okay? Which there should, there is going to be real estate investor-friendly. Uh, I'm stuttering. There are going to be real estate investing friendly realtors in every city uh, because there's like 10 million real estate agents in every city. OK, so anyways, uh, closing, closing will take place on or before. And then right here, you're going to place the dates. OK, so the date that you're going to place here is you're going to try and extend this bad boy out 60 days. OK, so today's broadcast um, today is what? Fit? January 21st. So 60 days from now will be March 21st. So I would want to put March 21st down. Okay. Some people may balk. They may be like 60 days. That's way too long. Okay. Well, let's do 45 days. You know, let's put it out there to, um, March 5th. If they still balk at that, then put a 30 day, uh, closing on here. Okay. Uh, but definitely don't put any date that's, uh, closer than 30 days. Okay. And uh, it says at, and then it has a line that you fill out right here. Right here, you're gonna fill, uh, you're gonna put the, the name of the uh, title company or real estate attorney's office that you're closing at, okay? Now check this out, you guys. This says subject to a 90 day period, subject to a 90 day period in which the buyer and seller shall be permitted to clear any titles. What this does, you guys, is this is very important. What this does is it actually gives you an extra 90 days, okay? So thank you. Heart this bad boy up, okay? So look, this gives you an extra 90 days to uh, wholesale the, pro uh, the pro uh, property in case there's uh, title problems, okay? If there's title problems that uh, pop up, then you can um, go ahead and extend it, okay? Now, I mean... I've never done this before, but I mean, you could tell a person, hey, we need to extend this 90 days because we're having title issues, okay? Um, title issues can mean anything, you know? So anyways, uh, let me take a sip of water. Alrighty, other agreements. This is a cash transaction. The buyer will pay all closing costs. Purchase price is net. The contract is subject 
to the approval of the buyer's partners and or acceptable appraisal by the buyer. In the event of the buyer's default, the deposit shall be the sole remedy. This is very, very important. So what's up, Lance Leitner is in the house. We're going to see you in Las Vegas in March. So look, this is very, very important. This, this, this is your loopholes, all right? This is so full of loopholes, it's not even funny. It gives you safeguards. It prevents you from getting your butt sued, okay? Like, I just um, got out of a, um, a litigation uh, uh, two years for uh, that we were fighting a lawsuit, okay, in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, it was with my divorce business. It wasn't with real estate, uh, but lawsuits suck. They're horrible. They stink, you know. I spent twelve thousand bucks, you know, over the past two years. Not very happy, okay. So don't get involved in a lawsuit if you don't have to. And this is going to, um, yeah, weasel clauses. I like it. So uh, don't call it weasel clauses. Call it weafy clauses. So look, uh, what this does is it basically states that if your partners do not approve of it, if it's not, if the appraisal is not acceptable to them then you can cancel it, okay? Your buyer's partners, your partners need to approve it, okay? If they don't approve it, then the can the contract can be canceled, okay? And then another loophole in here, you guys, or weasel clause, or weafi clause, or an overflow millions clause, is in the event of the buyer's default, the deposit shall be the sole remedy, okay? How much of a deposit did we tell the seller that we would give them, okay? T-Fab, 